Hello, my name is Amy Thomas Davis. Uh, I hope you are doing well. I want to share with you um, a message that is um, heavy on my heart in all the greatest ways. Um, there has been um, moments where this message has been, you know, grieving me, grieving. Uh, my heart feels a grievance because of just the state of things um, in the world and in the church. But I feel like this is um, a message of direction and also a message of hope that the Lord has really been revealing to me for the last couple of years. I want to share a little bit about that today. I want to uh, talk about this question about delay. How will delay lose its power? Because it's clear that delay seems to have a bit of power um, and sadly, I don't know if momentum is the right word, but a delay is, seems to have been happening and we don't like that. So how, can, how will delay lose its power and what is delay? These are uh, important questions to ask and this message is um, it's loaded with truth. I'll tell you that. I feel it, this message about delay, the message about the true knowledge of God being our timeline. This is truth. This is truth from the Lord. And I want to share it. I don't know. I'll say that I don't know that I will share every piece of it perfectly, but I'm going to do my very best to um, express to you what I know the Lord has been speaking to me. And I so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it here. I'm going to be reading a lot of verses. I'm going to go straight from the scripture with this and try to explain what this delay is and how it will lose its power. Now, first, we have to understand um, what time is. And if you followed our stuff, you know that we talk a lot about how the, the um, true knowledge of God is our timeline. That's what time is. It's the true knowledge of God. Let me show you that in the scriptures. I'm going to read you a couple. Let me go ahead and start here with um, one you hear me speak about a lot, which is Daniel 12. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth. That means many will access the spirit realm. Many will go back and forth as though through a portal or through a window, and knowledge will increase. You see, knowledge will increase. What is that knowledge? It's the true knowledge of God. I'm going to read to you a couple other verses. Let me read here um, Ephesians 4.13. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and read all of Ephesians, a few verses out of Ephesians. Stick with me with this. This is a really important message that it has to be, I feel it's important to hear. I'm trying to hear it with ears that are willing to hear and see it with eyes that are willing to see the truth. So stick with me here. I'm going to read. A lot of times we notice that people will shut it off when you start to read Bible verses because they want some hyped up experience. But right now we're going to read the word. We're going to hear what God is saying. So stick with me on this. It says in Ephesians 4, he gave some as apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Do you see our goal is the unity of the faith and the true knowledge of the Son of God? That's the goal. And it says then, Daniel, that many will go back and forth accessing the realm of the Spirit, even going to and fro on the earth, working for the, for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. And during that time, knowledge will increase because we have to come to the true knowledge, attain to the true knowledge of the Son of God. And there's a lot of things set up against that true knowledge. Let me finish Ephesians 4, and then I'm going to read a couple more verses, and I'll share with you the message I've heard from the Lord. 
Let me read this again. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ, as a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. Oh, that's our goal, you guys. That is our goal. So let me read to you here out of uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5. It says this. It says that the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. What are we doing? We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. So you see, the knowledge of God is our timeline. If there is a delay and at the timeline, or we're not going on in that timeline, we're not attaining to the true knowledge of God and there's a delay, it's because there is a, um, a, a fortress or a lofty thing that has been raised up against the knowledge of God. It's in the way. And we are divinely powerful to remove it. We are divinely powerful to remove it. That is the word of the Lord. I'm speaking the word of the Lord and it's written here. We're divinely powerful to remove those things set up against the true knowledge of God. You see, that's the problem. It's why we have delay. We're crying out, delay no longer, delay no longer. But the things that are set up are people have been uh, diving into false doc, believing false doctrines, believing these things. Let's go back and let's read Ephesians 4 again. As a result, we're no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. There are a lot of uh, things, words that are people are claiming are from the Lord, messages, full doctrines that people are embracing that just simply are not God. And what they are is actually blasphemy. It's not just a little bit of error. Right now there are messages being taught that are blasphemy. And I'm going to get into some of those messages and get into what blasphemy really is hopefully here in a minute um, during this blog. Okay, now let me go on here. I want to talk for a minute about the lofty things that are raised up against the knowledge of God. That word lofty means to exalt itself in arrogance. Oh. To exalt itself in arrogance against the true knowledge of God. Can we say those words exactly as they are? We're divinely powerful, though, to destroy the speculations and every arrogant thing that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. That's why it's blasphemy, because it lacks in reverence. So there's two things that keep us from the true knowledge of our, keep us um, in this place, people in a place of delay. Okay, how will delay lose its power? Um, there's two things that I wrote down here that I've been praying on and meditating on. All things irreverent must be stopped to stop the delay. The lack of reverential fear will continue to cause delay. It is a lofty thing raised up against true knowledge. Also, the lying spirit is a lofty thing raised up against true knowledge. The lying spirit. And I'll tell you that lying spirit is, um, it is, uh, does um, exalt itself arrogantly against true knowledge because it opposes the true knowledge of God. It opposes the Lord's people. It opposes the remnant of God's people that will shine like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. That spirit opposes, it comes against everything that is holy and righteous and right. And here's what it does, that lying spirit. It, it makes it look like, um, it makes false doctrines look real. It even makes false doctrines look um, appealing to many people. The scripture says that narrow is the gate that leads to life and few there are that find it. Because sometimes the truth is not necessarily popular. 
But there is a message of the true knowledge of God that we must attain to. See, we have a harvest. The Lord has a harvest. We have a, a work to be done here for the Lord. And one of those things is coming against everything that comes against true knowledge. So irreverence must be stopped. It is one of those things. The second thing is a lying spirit. I want to explain to you a little bit more about this irreverence. This is very, very important. Stick with me here. I'm going to read to you from uh, Revelation chapter 4. I want to explain to you what it says in Revelation that the throne room is. Let me tell you why for just a moment. There are... Um, Actually, before I get in this, I'm going to share a little short little story. One time um, I was at a meeting, beautiful, lovely, amazing leadership, amazing people trying to, um, you know, encourage people in the ways of the kingdom and the ways of God. And there was a beautiful time of worship happening and the people were engaging in worship. And it was sort of an open mic setting and for some of the people and somebody had taken a mic and began to um, do something that felt completely irreverent. It drew away from the place of worship and the, the place of freedom with the Lord. It drew away from that. And um, uh, the person went into all kinds of crazy antics. And normally you just sit and kind of allow people to express themselves in whatever way they're expressing themselves. But this was not an expression of, uh, you know, herself expressing herself in worship. This was... Um, irreverence towards the Lord. And I heard the Lord speak to me and say, are you going to stop this? And I was like, who is he talking to? <laughs> because I don't, I, I don't love to do that sort of thing. I would just rather allow people to sort of be who they are. And the Lord very, you know, very firmly said, are you going to stop this? And again, I'm like, he has got to be talking to somebody else. I'm kidding. But at that point, it was like, you know, just taking the mic and redirecting to reverence. And it was such a picture for me of how, you know, how important the reverential fear of the Lord is and how much, how, how much lack of reverence there is um, in all the many different church cultures. And the one thing that is going to light the way in this new day that we're in is that submission to the Lord. And it is wrapped up. It's, it's, it's partnered with. It's all a part of the reverential fear of the Lord. It's very, very important. There's a lot of crazy theologies right now, a lot of crazy things. And so many of you just desiring, like, I want to know what the truth is. You know, and so you don't have to be afraid because the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. We have to have eyes brave enough to see and ears to hear, a heart, I'm sorry, a heart brave enough to receive and, and eyes to see and ears to hear. That's what we have to have in this hour. We have to have the courage to receive and begin to move in even a doctrine that might not be as popular as some of the false things that are being taught. Okay, reverential fear is so important. The throne room is, it's all about reverence in the throne room. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. I want to tell you a couple of things that are not in the throne room. I know this, I feel it from the Lord. And when I read it in scripture, I don't see that these things are in the scripture. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture first. And then I'll get to those, hopefully. Here it is. Revelation chapter 4. I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven, the first voice which I had heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking to me. Come up here and I'll show you what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was standing in heaven and one sitting on the throne. He who was sitting was like a jasper stone and a sardis in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. And around the throne were 24 Around the throne were 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white garment and golden crowns on their heads. Here it is. Listen to this. Out of the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. What are the seven spirits of God? Isaiah 11 says this, The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and 
the reverential fear of the Lord. And he will delight, it says in Isaiah 11, he will delight in the fear of the Lord. It is the Lord's delight. And it's in the throne room. It's the centerpiece of the throne room. The reverential fear of the Lord. And I'll tell you, the sevenfold spirit of God is eternal. Each realm, it's, 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 very, it's an eternal realm, the sevenfold spirit of God. Love is eternal. God is eternal. He is love and he is the sevenfold spirit. It's eternal. So in the throne room, the centerpiece, the very, the, the core of it all is the reverential fear of the Lord. And interestingly, in Isaiah, it's directly connected to the true knowledge. This is mighty, you guys. We have to remember um, what we're doing here. This is to be pleasing to the Lord. It is not to build um, a business or to build a ministry. No, this is to revere him. It's a mighty message. You see, let me tell you what the throne room is not. I read it to you. It goes on to say in Revelation 4 that they're continually singing in the throne room. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And because of your will, they existed and were created. It's a continuous uh, worship to the Lord. He doesn't interrupt himself with ridiculous things. No. It's a constant reverence to him. The throne room. I'll tell you there are a lot of crazy things that we've heard over the years and people have said they saw in the throne room. One of those from a well-known leader was that there are Ferris wheels in the throne room. I assure you, there are no Ferris wheels in the throne room. In the throne room is the reverential fear of the Lord. You're not bored in the throne room. In the throne room, you give him all glory and all honor. You are for, we are filled fully and completely with the true knowledge of God. It fills us. There's no need for our soulish desires to be filled because he fills us through and through. We haven't attained to that yet. We're in process of attaining to the true knowledge of God. We're in that process. And we go and there's visitations. I believe that we can go to these places, go into the heart of God, hear from him, even in the throne room. But it is, it is a reverence there. It's not a place we go in our imagination where we jump up on a daddy's lap. There are times, yes, of intimacy, times of intimacy and close. It's a constant um, intimacy with the Lord, constant closeness. There are times where we are desperate for father. There are moments where we're calling to our friends, but in every moment, it's complete reverence. Complete reverence. So if we visited the throne room or encountered his heart in such a way, we will be transformed. Transformed. Let me read to you another scripture if I can find it here. And have put on, we have put on the new self is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. It's being renewed to a true knowledge. So if we have had an encounter with the Lord, it will transform us. It will continue to bring us in to the fullness of the knowledge of God. I had an experience a couple, almost two years ago now, and um, I'm writing about it in my book, but I'll share this part of it. When I, I experienced um, just the fringes of the realm of the spirit of knowledge, which of course is eternal because he's eternal. And in the moments where I got to experience it, um, I noticed that um, afterwards it was like that knowledge of God continued to grow in me in every area, like I'm growing in to the understanding, I'm growing in to the knowledge of God. And I believe I was a picture in this of what we're doing here, growing into the knowledge of God. 
And we have to remember where the, this place of reverence, remember what's of him and what's not of him. This is very, very important. And one thing when I came, uh, when I, that first encounter was over, the first thing I asked for was more reverential fear. It was important to me. Something had come and transformed, had, had changed something inside of me. You know, I love that verse in Hebrews 4 that says, God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's what he did. When I was able to go to the places where the true knowledge of God is, it came and it divided soul from spirit. So I'm able to see these things these things maybe about myself that um, and the Lord's just taking them away, just ripping them away. And that's the process that we're in. And we come into the fullness of the knowledge of God in this place of reverence. And you know, this lying spirit has been deceiving many people. It's deceiving people in a doc doctrines that just, um, that just aren't right. Some of them seem almost right and they just aren't quite all the way right. And I was going to go into uh, some of those doctrines here, but um, I, I feel a little, um, I'm feeling like I'm going to wrap this up instead. I'm not going to get into all of those things, but I am going to say that we have to know what really the throne room's about. We have to know what we're doing here, coming against these things that are lies. Take a look at the, the doctrine that you're following or learning about. Is it a lie or is it the truth? Does it, does it almost look true, but isn't quite the full truth? Because that's the saying with saying the thing with deception is it almost looks true. Let me, let me read this one more time here in Ephesians 4. And then I think I'm going to pray and wrap this up. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to pray for me. It says this, as a result to the full knowledge of God, the true knowledge of who God is, the fullness of Christ. As a result, no longer will we be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. Craftiness in deceitful scheming. There are messages that just aren't right. And so I'm encouraging you, Listen to those that are um, not out for selfish ambition, but are desperate to uh, bring a message of hope. There's one thing I forgot, and I feel it being pulled out of me by the Lord that I have to share before I pray. I want to share with you uh, what irreverence is. Now, one of the things that um, seems to be a lofty thing raised up against true knowledge is um, when popular people uh, deliver and release and share a message that's not uh, sound doctrinally and it's not okay by the Lord. When, the, when, when popular people are doing that, it seems to look have the appearance of the Lord is gathering there. But I want to I wanna urge you, and I felt the urgency from the Lord for myself, that we, um, this, it says in Matthew 12, Jesus says this, He who does not gather with me truly is scattering. We're not working with him. We're working against him. And I don't want to be working against him. I want to be working with him. Let me read this to you. I heard this from the Lord. I wrote most of this down this morning. Those who gather will be recognizable. Knowing the fear of the Lord, they will persuade men and be carriers of the true knowledge of God. They will be recognizable to you if you have eyes to see and ears to hear and heart brave to receive the truth. Because the truth about what the scripture says, um, sometimes it is a little hard to hear. Because we would love to see everybody in the whole world get saved and some of these other things. And, but the truth is that we do have a harvest of people to bring in. And to do that, we have to stop this delay and stop believing things that simply aren't true. Let me go on. Anything contrary to true knowledge is as enmity to God. It is blasphemy and a complete displeasure to the Lord. The word blasphemy in the Greek means this, showing contempt or lack of reverence for God, gross irreverence. The Webster definition of irreverent means lacking proper respect um, or seriousness of something um, that should be taken seriously. I think like the throne room. 
It should be taken seriously. The truth should be taken seriously. There can't be a lack of reverence there. All of these things, I'm going to read this little, um, a little thing that I wrote down here. All of these things would include denying prophetic power, healing power, and resurrection power. Those irreverently busying about, about also embracing a lie and teaching a lie and denying the fullness of the power in the name of Jesus will draw the vengeance and judgment of the Lord, for this is the rejection of grace. Now this is truth. I'll read it to you from the scripture, the very best I know how. I may not have um, spoken it all exactly perfectly, but I'm telling you the, the core of this message is true. Let's remember that this is not like we're throwing some a big party constantly and doing whatever we feel like in this. Yes, the Lord is joy. Yes, the Lord is exciting and he brings us on a journey. But we are not to uh, disrespect those things that are serious. It is considered as blasphemy. So I'm praying right now for the spirit of truth that guides us into all truth, that it would continue to, to, to guide all of us into the place of this true knowledge of God. I'm praying for you now. You see, when the lying spirit comes, it lies to you about who you are and who he is. So that we might, it delays you coming in to this uh, true knowledge and into the just complete image of Christ. It's a delay to that. And you are divinely powerful to destroy those arrogant things raised up against that knowledge. You are. You're divinely powerful. And I can sense in my spirit that many of you have been being lied to by people in your life for a long time. You Maybe you believe the truth and you know you stand on it and you are walking in the truth and people are telling you you're not and that you're crazy and that that's, none of that's true. But you know that you're standing firm on that truth. Well, I pray strength for you to continue to stand. I pray strength for you, grace, to stand and keep standing. When you've done everything you can do, just keep standing. Keep standing and keep believing. There's nothing like it when we can stand and believe. I love it in the scripture, you know, and Ezekiel has come before the Lord and the Lord's like, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. You know that you've come before the one that is true. So if that's you and you feel like you've come before him and you're feeling weak from people beating you down about the truth that you stand and I encourage you, I encourage you, just keep standing. If you're watching and you're questioning, I don't know if what I'm believing is true and what I'm believing is false. So I'll tell you there's, there's a couple of people that are, there are a handful of people that are really speaking truth and teaching it. They really are. Contact us. We'll give you a list of some people that you can uh, listen to. Of course, I always say, Paul Keith, my husband, I'm always bouncing all of it off, all the doctrine stuff. Chris Reed, a friend of ours, he's got great stuff, great teachings. Paul Keith and Chris have done things together that have been very powerful. There's a few others that we've been uh, listening to and connected to that are uh, walking and carrying the truth and doing their very best to express it to a hurting world. So get a hold of the true message. Don't just listen to everything. Get a hold of the real thing and don't let go. So eat it. Prophesy it. Speak it. Deliver it. Share it. Don't go sharing everything. Don't process everything with everybody because it brings confusion. Process with those close to you, but deliver only the word of the Lord. I pray these things for you. I encourage you with these things. I pray for your whole household, for your family and your children, your children's children, that they would know the truth and it would set them free. I encourage you with this today in Jesus' name.